So you're most welcome to Kivale National Park and Bigodi Town Council, a tourism town council. I'm called Kirungi Gerard, one of the retired guides from Uganda Wildlife Authority, who has been working in Kibale since 1991 up to 2019 when he retired. When I retired. Now I'm working in the community. Um, of course, when I started working in Kibale National Park in 1991, that's when, that's when Uganda actually <coughs> started setting up new uh, national parks. At first, we had 10 national parks in Uganda. But now when this government came into power, it opened other more seven national parks to make the total of 10 national parks. So at the, <coughs> so, excuse me. So at the, at the moment, we have 10 national parks in Uganda. At first, we had Queen Elizabeth National Park, Madison, Madison Falls National Park, and Kidepo National Park. But now, 1991, when this government looked at other protected areas which had the potential of making revenue into the country, they added other national parks which had attractions like Kibale, one of it, which is the main attraction here, is the chimpanzees. And now people come here to look for the chimpanzees in Kibale National Park. Now, when we go to Semlik National Park, there is a hot springs. And since it is in the Albertin uh, uh, Lift Valley, some birds come from Congo. Bird watchers come to kill those birds. Now when you go to Wenzori National Park, people hike from the bottom of the, well, the mountain up the peak of the Wenzori Mountains. So people enjoy also walking in those areas. Now when we go to Lake Imboro, it's a small national park which has very good national attractions like the zebras, the topis, and the like. Now, when you go to Windy, Impenetrable Forest National Park, which has also an attraction of the gorillas and the batwa, those pygmy people. Now, when you go to Muga, uh, Mugahinga, there are also some gorillas there, which is also an attraction, and some of the um, I mean, when you go up there, you see Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda. So it's at the peak, I mean, it's where the two national I mean, two countries meet. So that is one of the attractions over there. Now, when you uh, look at the seven national parks which are added on to Kiba, the national, I mean, to Uganda national parks, we make the total of 10. So those are the attractions we have I mean, those are the national parks we have in Uganda at the moment. Uh, when I retired as a guide, I told you I started working in 1991 as a guide. Then I worked up to 2019, 30th April, that's when I retired. Of course, I came back and joined the community and started working with the community. But the community had already been sustained. Now, when you look at the organs of Uganda Relief Authority, it has uh, around six departments that run it. It has the tourism department, those are the guides who take out, that's the department which takes the tours out to see the attractions around here. Then we have the law enforcement, that one goes out to patrol or to see the illegal activities taking place in the park. Then we have research and monitoring. That one cars actually collects data around to see how many animals are coming out. Uh, I mean, coming up, increase if the animals are increasing in number, they're decreasing, the forest is dying and whatever. So that is the research and monitoring. Now when you go to the community conservation department, that one deals with the local, with the local community surrounding the protected areas uh, to sensitize them how they can work hand in hand with the communities in order to protect the protected areas. Then we have also the administration, that those are the bosses in the offices. Then we have also um, the intelligence section, which actually deals with the people dealing in illegal activities. So if you do any illegal activities in Uganda, make, uh, make sure that you are under that section, which is also foreseeing you, how you are running it. So those are the six departments, I may say, which run the organization. Um, 
I, as a retired guide, when I came back to the community, we had already got one uh, man who came from the UP Peace Corp, as a Peace Corp from the US, who senses the local community around Kibale National Park called Mark Nonan, actually who taught us how we can benefit from tourism. He taught us how to make uh, money out of the fields who come around here. So he showed us how we can start hotels, good lodges, restaurants, um, other walks in the community. So one good example which he can give on ground here is he opened <coughs> Coffred, that is Kibale Association for the Rural Development. He opened the swamp walk here in Kibale, in Magombe Swamp. Where I'm now, it's one of the attractions in Kibale here, which is international in conservation measures outside the park. So it is broadwide. We have got a lot of uh, gifts from different countries, from different organizations, which are supporting conservation in tourism here. I mean, and. Uh, uh, the extension of the communities here. Uh, he taught us actually how we can start tourism outside the protected areas by uh, offering a swamp walk. Now, when you go in Gofred, you see how people enjoy watching these planets. We have around five, six species, five, six species which are common. We have the red colobus monkey, the black and white colobus monkey, the red colobus monkey, and the vivid monkey. So all and uh, so baboons and chimpanzees at times they visit from the park. So when you visit that area, you expect to see those animals. So we have also the swamp walk. I mean, sorry, the community walk. Whereby when you go to the community, you can experience how the locals stay culturally. The customs which we have in here, we have now about five cultures. We have the Bachiga, we have the Batoro, the Banyarwanda, and the other tribes which are also in. So by the moment I'm talking, of course, we take out to the communities, we visit the communities to see how the communities live in the villages, in their homes. So in the community work, there you can experience how they make the organic coffee. They prepare it, they show it right from the garden, the way how they dry it, the way how they pound it, they winnow it, then they pound, after pounding it, then they, um, they roast it, after roasting it, then they grind it or pound it, then we um, winnow it, I mean, sorry, a sieve it and then they boil water and you drink it. You taste it by yourself. So that's one of the activities which is in the community. Then the second activity is maybe uh, to see how people make the, uh, how they brew our local beer, like the banana gin. People taste that one and they enjoy it. So someone actually shows you how the banana, we extract banana juice the way how uh, we treat it to make we ferment it up the time of distilling it then uh, you taste it if you are willing you can buy also to make that uh, to make your day enjoyable in the hotels it's a very good and strong drink mostly when you take a uh, double distilled you know, at times we call it double happiness when you take the single one that's when it's a bit weak around 40 percent but the other one which is double, it is around 70%, so you can enjoy that one. Um, now, when you go to, um, uh, on the side of women, we have women's group who actually have been neglected by the previous government regimes. But now, under this conservation area, people are get, getting support from their own uh, makings. They make some good handcrafts out of the materials, the local materials from the swamp, from the forest, from the gardens, from the banana, from the banana plantations, then they weave different kinds of handcrafts, of which these people sell to the tourists. So when you are out, you expect 
at least to see a good number of groups of women who weave baskets, you can either teach them or they can also teach you if you're interested in that. And <clears throat> to support them the more is buying their products. So most tourists enjoying their products right from the grassroots to those people who make them. Yeah, when you visit some uh, uh, offices, I mean some tourism centers, you can find those handcrafts there to buy. It's good. If you're interested in it, you can buy that one. Then, uh, yeah, those are some of the activities which are done in the community. So those activities are done by Kafred and which knowledge we got from that Piscop man who gave that knowledge. And more than that, with the Uganda Wildlife Authority, as it is sensitizing the local people to benefit from the local community, it is also doing the same and also supporting them by giving some seedlings to plant in their own garden so that they should not go back to the forest to extract wood and firewood, I mean firewood, and maybe cut timber out of it like that. So it is part of the extension of the uh, uh, community services which are rendered from the park. Okay, I for one, when I came back also joined the community of which I do the same communities. So Magombe Swamp, of course, has told you it has got a variety of those primates and a good number of birds. So that is one is as Kafri does it. So we have also other groups which do the same. And me, I joined the Yuga, uh, the Nishiam. Uh, we call this project is called Kibale Cultural Tourism Center, where we show also the cultural things. We have a simple museum which has got a variety of our local communities, which you normally, I mean, our local utensils, which you normally use. If you're lucky and you come down on ground and see what is there, we have a very big attraction, a skull of an elephant, which was picked from Kiwade National Park. You get more information about that skull. We have got other skulls. Then we have got other utensils, I mean, other, <coughs> other utensils that which we use, like the graining stone, like um, the wooden, uh, wooden sandals, uh, the black, I mean, the, the, the bark cloth from the tree, which is, I mean, the cloth which is made from the bark of the tree, the fig tree. And uh, we also have um, also the system of beer brewer, brewing. So all that one is inside the museum of which maybe you're going to see later. Um, then we can also go for the community, as I told you, it is also coffee experience. You experience the coffee process, you experience the beer process, you also experience the Big Good Women's Group. And at the same time, you also experience a local healer or a medicine man who uses our local hubs to treat people formally how we used to stay. Up to now, we still use the hubs as medicine to treat our people. So when you are on the ground, you can also actually enjoy seeing our local healer who can show you how the local people use to treat uh, the fellow village mates. Uh, he can also show, show you different kinds of herbs by treating, I mean, how they treat, it used to treat the people up to now. Some people still believe how, I mean, to use the same herbs. So you are likely to also see those ones. Then we also start carrying some good stories on our way when you are walking. We can also visit some schools to see how our children they study in these poor schools of ours here. Well, people who are well wishers, they also support. They get some sponsors to support their school with children who are vulnerable. And then you can also visit some shops, local commodities here which are sold. If it's a market day, you can also enjoy our market. Like here in Bugodi Town Council, the tourism, tourism town council, it is always on Saturday. But we can, you can also visit some small shops and bars. You see how people live and behave around here. So please, when you're around, have a lot to see. Have a lot to see.
not see. We have simple lodges, more are coming up. So I think you'll enjoy it when you're on the ground. Thank you very much for listening to me. You're most welcome. I'm called Jad by name, a retired guide from Kiwadi National Park, from Kiwadi Cultural Tourism Center.